Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. Um, Danny Flexen on Seconds Out did an interview with Frank Warren today, and it was very interesting, especially as it began with Flexen saying, I'm here with uh, my good friend Frank Warren, and we've just had a nice lunch together. <laughs> I wonder if we're going to get any impartiality on this uh, interview. Well, obviously Flexen did not go for the jugular. He asked one or two, not pointed, but somewhat probing questions, I suppose you might say, vaguely probing questions. And Warren, of course, answered them. And the whole thing was a very softly, softly approach by Flexen in general. I remember Danny Flexen when he wrote for Boxing News. He was a very good journalist. And now he just seems to be almost chilling for certain people, if you know what I mean. Um, but the crux of this sort of 18, 19 minute interview whatever it was is that is this from Warren he started off by saying Alex Krasuk who is Usek's agent put it in right and he had the email there like Frank often does he said and he read it out it seemed to be written in rather broken English but uh, Krasuk said I don't blame Warren I don't blame blame Queensbury I blame Tyson Fury for his demands and at one point Warren said well I didn't think there were any demands <laughs> really Frank really you don't watch Tyson Fury's social media then you don't you don't follow his comments okay all right and then a few minutes later two or three minutes later he said well oh yeah about this 70 30 thing I think Flexen might have raised this issue um what about that then surely that's a demand and Frank said yeah but we didn't get a chance to negotiate well, no, Frank, you didn't because the USEC accepted it. What more do you want? Your guy says 70-30. I want 70-30, expecting USEC to come back and say, get out of here. And instead, USEC says, yeah, all right, then. I'll go with that. <laughs> of course you don't negotiate if someone accepts. You know, you should be glad that they accepted. Don't try and spin it so that it's, you know, a point for your guy and, and a black mark against the other fella. No, he accepted it. He didn't need to negotiate. The guy was trying to be as... You know, accommodating as he possibly can be. Then there was this convoluted business about the the rematch uh, clause, and uh, Usek went on in in his own broken English went on uh, social media and said, you know, you were the one that raised the the, the rematch uh, clause, you know, not me. Um, but there was some sort of to in and fro in about it. And now bear in mind, if Usyk beat Tyson Fury, he'd hold all four belts. He would be the undisputed champion. And a, a true lineage, not this fraudulent one that Fury talks about, a true lineage would be started if, well, by the winner of Fury or Tyson or, or uh, Usyk. So if Usyk wins the, re wins the first fight, he's undisputed champ. And they're talking about him only having 30% of the money. And Frank Warren's reply to this was, Tyson Fury is where the money is. He quoted his, he quoted uh, Fury's uh, White Hart Lane, you know, against Dillian White. He quoted those figures, those pay-per-views, the, the highest ranking pay-per-view figures of the year, bigger than Usek Joshua and so on and so forth. He, he was, he, he went to town on him and he, Fury, he mentioned, he mentioned Fury's had three number one books. Whoa, yeah, great, you know, and, and he's, he's, there's been a Netflix series about him or so. I haven't seen it, I'm not going to watch it, but you know, he was big enough. In other words, he was saying Tyson Fury is where the money is. He is the big star. OK, you know, yeah, he's a big star. He's, he's, I think he's, he will have suffered very badly from this whole episode. But, yeah, he's, you know, he sells tickets. No question about it. He sells pay-per-views. But, you know, a guy holding four belts, who's the undisputed champion, takes 30% against the guy he's just beaten, possibly. What about if Fury won all four belts? In, in the rematch, you can only have what ten percent, twenty percent. Is it all back to the Dillian White scenario? I mean, it, the whole thing smacked of with Frank Warren smacked of damage limitation. The bottom line for him was if Usyk wants to earn any money at all, you know, he's got to fight Fury. That's where the money is, and he can't earn anywhere near that amount by fighting anyone else. Now. I don't know. And then, of course, they talked about, you know, the fact that the, the, the WBA regular champion, Daniel Dubois, will be next up for Usyk. And I mean, this is, you know, the fact that oh, well, you've got to hand it to Warren. He's, he's been very, very crafty about this because he doesn't care if Fury doesn't doesn't fight Usyk. He says he wants to fight. But if you know, he's, he's got Dubois, he's you know, got Joe Joyce and you know, there's another potential fight for Usyk. 
he doesn't really care. He, he pretends he does. He pretends he, you know, rallied at the end, rallied at the death. And he kept saying, they pulled out. They pulled the plug. Well, you know what? Maybe they were, maybe they just had enough of this bullshit. Maybe they just thought, I've had it, we've had enough of this. We're out of it. You know, this guy, if someone, if you go up to a girl, if, or if you meet a girl and you want to go out with her and she says no, so you, you wait a day and then you ask her again, she says no, and then, you know, you ask her again and I'm, I've told you I'm not interested. Uh, no, really, really, I'm not interested. Leave it, leave it. And then you walk away. What are you going to say to that guy? He's moving on with his life. He's asked the girl out a number of times. She's not interested. There's no chemistry there. She doesn't look at him in that way. Okay, fair enough. Okay, Ali. But don't then say, God, did you see that geezer? God, he made a pathetic effort with that girl, didn't he? He didn't, you know, God, he's, he's quit, hasn't he? He's walked away. What a coward, you know. God. Well, you, would, you, would you have preferred him to go simping around the girl? You know, trying to sort of trying to you know create something where there's nothing no if someone doesn't want you ultimately you can persevere but there comes a time when you know the phrase flogging a dead horse well that can happen and you've got to walk away and get on with your life and go looking for pastors new you know, i think it's such a shame this fight isn't going to happen and i've made other videos about this i'm not going to rehash what i previously said but I don't know what, I don't even think Fury wants to be a fighter anymore unless it's against someone he knows he can absolutely smash to bits like a Chisora who's shot. I mean, what what's he going to do next? You know, Jarrell Miller's just beaten Lucas Brown. Is he going to fight him? What about Ortiz? What is he, like 50 or something? Oh, bring him on. Maybe he'll get his mate in the ring, Joseph Parker. He won't go anywhere near Joe Joyce, I know that. It's a shame, isn't it? Anyway, comments below, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thanks for your time as always. I'm out of here. Peace out.